sometimes I will sneak into my parents' room in the night because I wanted to sleep with them. I just didn't want to be about stuff. So you know what they did? They got a Lucy doll. Lucy doll came to my rescue. Because somehow, no matter how afraid I felt, Lucy doll made me feel safe. Because I was not alone. Now, Lucy doll is long gone. But when I get afraid, I often think that Lucy doll is right there with me. Do you have a favorite little stuffed animal or something to take to bed. And that makes you feel good, doesn't it? Someone to, to snuggle up against in the darkness of the night. Have you, have you ever been afraid? You know, we've all been afraid, haven't we? We've all been afraid. Even us adults, we get afraid sometimes. Some of us are still afraid of the dark. Some of us are afraid of thunder and lightning when the storms come. And there's other things that we might be afraid of. We might be afraid of bugs, bees, the dentist, <laughs> doctors. I'm afraid of heights. Some people are afraid of heights. Maybe cats and dogs. Mice, and maybe even germs. Your university teachers are afraid of mice. And guess what? So am I. They might be little, but they're little scary to me sometimes. I uh, occasionally get a mouse in, in the kitchen or in our cycle at the river. There's a lot of them. And they can scare me enough to. Put me up on the chair. How about that? So you know, today we're going to hear a story about Jesus and his disciples. When Jesus told his disciples that he was going to go up and be with his father, they became afraid. Because they thought, what would happen to them with the people that took Jesus also come and take them and harm them. So they were very, very afraid. And Jesus knew that his disciples were afraid. So he gave them words that comforted them. He said to them, I am leaving you with a gift. The way they give us peace of mind and and Jesus told them that they don't need to be afraid. That they don't need to be troubled. Because he said, remember what I have told you. I am going away. But I will come back to you again. And when I come back to you again, I will get you and you will always be with me. And these words, they were a great comfort to the disciples at that time. And you know what? They're a great comfort for us today also. Because when Jesus returned to his Father in heaven, he had his Father in heaven send down the Holy Spirit to be with all of his disciples to comfort them until the day that he returned. And that means me and you too. Are you a disciple of Jesus? That's right. So not only did he send his own followers, his own disciples at his time, but all the disciples and all the followers for all time. Isn't it nice to know that we receive such a wonderful gift? Peace of mind. So now, when we become afraid, if we're afraid of night, or there's times in our lives 
when we might be afraid of the storm, or just troubling times. It's nice to know that Jesus is with us and that He sends the Holy Spirit to us when we need Him. All the time, as a matter of fact, the Holy Spirit actually lives in us just like Jesus does. So we really don't need to be afraid. So the next time you are afraid of something, just remember that Jesus is with you. Okay. Thank you very Dear Father, thank you for sending us the Holy Spirit to guide us and to calm all our fears. Thank you also for sending us the great Thank you. 
Sally's got about that shit around. And she said, okay, okay. But I know that it's hard sometimes. It's hard. Jesus said, do not let your heart be troubled and do not let them be afraid. Every day there's something else to worry about. Something else to fear. How can our hearts not be troubled when mom's is in the home and we don't know where the money is coming from and the children, well, who knows what they're up to these days. People are out of work and our retirement money is drying up and the, the news channels are telling us 24 hours a day what's wrong with the economy and what's wrong with the politicians and what's wrong with some broken person who's just taken another life. Not let your heart be troubled. But Jesus promises us peace. He says, that He shall leave with you my peace I give to you. I do not let I do not give as the world gives. Now when you're reading your Bibles and you're reading the words of Jesus, do you ever wonder what did Jesus sound like? when he said these things. And I think that we all do to some extent. And we, we might read a passage like uh, in Matthew 23 when Jesus said, Woe to you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites! Woe to you, blind guys, you blind fools! How do you think Jesus sounded? Maybe something like I did. Or you might have some other thing in your mind about that. How about in Mark chapter 15, when Jesus cries out from the cross with a loud voice, Eli, Eli, Mama, Ava, Sephani, which means, My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Kind of easy to hear how that might have sounded. In the context of both of these passages, gives us a clue as to the character of Jesus' voice, but it's not the case uh, in this passage. Jesus says, I hate you, peace I hate with you, my peace I give to you. How does it sound? Now we might assume that he was speaking very confidently and strongly, you know, like one like the Jesus in one of those pictures. You know, the old picture of Jesus with the halo and you know, pointing the finger. Okay. Um, but if we look at what's going on, look at what's going on in this passage. They're in the upper room. This is the upper room discourse. These, these few chapters there in John. Uh, we started talking about this last week. Jesus and his disciples are, are there just before Passover and Jesus kneels down and washes the disciples' feet. And of course, Peter complains about this. But Jesus tells him, unless I wash you, you need to have no share in me. So he's preparing his disciples for his death and for their future life. He says very truly, I tell you, one of you will betray me, and then Judas is carried. He leaves the room and goes out into the night. And then he tells Peter very truly, I tell you, before the cock crows, you will have denied me three times. He tells them, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. If you love me, he will keep my commandments. I am the true vine, and my Father is the vine grower. And he, this is my commandment, that you love one another, as I have loved you. No one has greater love than this, than to lay down one's life for one's friends. The world hates you. Be aware that it hated me before it hated you. 
Jesus and the disciples go out into the night. Luke tells us that Jesus prayed, Father, if you are willing, remove this cup from me, that not my will, but yours be done. He's in anguish as he prayed this. Jesus said several times that night, let not your heart be troubled. But how difficult is it to imagine a more troubling night? Jesus talked about peace, but it all hell was about to break loose on him and on his little band of followers. In fact, it had already begun. And the, the emotion throughout all of this, you can imagine, was just unspeakable sadness. Peace I leave with you, my peace I give to you. And you can imagine Jesus speaking these words of comfort and peace in a tone of voice that matched the sadness and the confusion in that room on that dark night in which he was betrayed. The point is here, all of this hits home to us in a whole new way. Jesus says, we do not give peace as the world gives. And that's something for which we should truly be thankful. The world is anything but peaceful most of the time. And so what little peace it has to offer always comes provisionally. It's always suspect and it's definitely precarious. The world cannot give what itself does not possess. There is the peace of it all that has to come from somewhere else. And Jesus offers us this lasting peace. Perhaps a broken voice and with tears in his eyes. And let's us know that all the problems and all the illnesses and tragedies and sorrows of this world that have made us yearn for peace cannot overcome it, cannot take away the peace that Christ gives. So it's possible to have this peace right in the middle of life, right in the middle of all the things that trouble us. And we know this because it was right in the middle of all these things that Jesus spoke and these promises were given. All the terrors of this world cannot cancel the peace that Jesus brings. It didn't do it that night and it won't do it now. We really can have lasting peace and cry and sorrow all at the same time. The presence of hardship in our lives does not mean that the Holy Spirit that Jesus also promised has abandoned us. He, the Spirit, and pain and suffering can and do coexist. You have to remember that along with the promise of Jesus, Jesus also gave us a command, a command to love. Love is the thing that ties all of this together. You remember in 1 Corinthians chapter 13, Paul says that he can do all of these great things for people, but if he does not have love, he's just a plain gong. And there will be no peace. It's the love that makes sense of what we do. And it's the love that opens us up to the peace. But you know, I think there are times when we do love others. Maybe not as perfectly as we should, maybe not as often as we should, but we do. And when we obey Jesus' command, we really do receive His promises. But what we have to do now is to learn to learn to live more consistently, to 
love in such a way that it's a part of our story. And people see it in us, and, and we are now known as the people who love. The people who love. And that, that brings us right around back to the beginning. He said he will set the Holy Spirit. This is the one who comes alongside of us, who lives with us and in us, and reminds us of Jesus' words, lest we forget that our story isn't about us. We cannot love others if we are the center of our story. The story is about God. We learn to, to listen, and when we learn to listen for that still, small voice, and when we learn to pay attention to what God may be saying to us, the Spirit will transform us, and there will be love, and there will be peace in our lives, and possibly in the lives of the people around us. All God's people said,